When it comes to realism, there are really only two main things that you need to worry about. Lighting and texturing. For lighting, there is a separate mini-series that you can have a look at, but here we'll see how real-life textures just propel your renders to absolute realism. And when you talk about models with real-life textures, there is no better way to achieve them but by using photogrammetry. We'll make this Scorpion APC using photogrammetry and also see how to correct the nuances that arise during the process. During scanning, you don't always have ideal conditions. This three-part series is all about making the best possible assets in less than ideal conditions. We'll talk about how we can quickly gather the data for photo scanning using video from your phone in a matter of minutes, process them to be ready for photo scanning, and importantly, how to process these extremely dense meshes in Blender to make them ready for you in your scenes. Stick around and you'll get a free high quality 3D model as well that I've made for you using the same technique. We'll be using Reality Capture and this technique is Gorilla Photogrammetry. Alright, we'll use our phone to shoot our video in overcast conditions at 4K 30fps which most devices these days are capable of. We will move slowly around the subject to reduce motion blur and capture every part of it that we can. This is the Scorpion APC. We'll move around it in an onion peel fashion, which means we move around the object in the first pass and then moving subsequently closer with next passes, making sure to get closer to individual parts of the object. We can see that we have a real life limitation here that we cannot reach the top of the object and this becomes problematic when you do not have a texture data to project later in the process. We will see how we mitigate this using texture painting during the processing part in Blender. So we'll take three round passes and this will get the job done mostly. We'll bring this file into After Effects. Speed it up so that we have around 600 frames. For an object the size of a vehicle, about 600 frames ensure that we have adequate overlap between those frames. This will help aligning the images in the reality capture in the next step of the process. We will bring up the shadows and decrease the highlights so that the image is flat and lighting is neutralized. You can shoot in log footage as well, which will give you some more wiggle room to play with. We will then export it out as a JPEG sequence. We've now converted the video into frames, 617 in total. We'll select them all and then we'll put them into Reality Capture. There we go. The first step is to align the images, setting the image downscale factor as 1 and click Align. We wait and we wait. All the images have aligned and we've got ourselves a sweet point cloud. This is just so fascinating for me when all of it comes together quite nicely fairly early on in the process. We'll now examine it to see how the point cloud has come together and see if anything is lacking. We'll define the ground plane now to align it with one of the axes. Now we'll about two for the top view and then we'll rotate it, align it with one of the axes. This will help define the area for mesh generation which is the next step. We'll see how it looks from different angles and then go on to set reconstruction region. We'll clear the current region and we'll define a new one. Set the rectangular boundaries as close to our subject as possible. There we go. And then just inspect it in perspective view to see how everything binds together. Adjust the height, see how it's looking, top view, side view, make minor adjustments if needed, backside, again some minor adjustments, and we'll make the bottom margin a bit tighter as well. In the photogrammetry process, inspection at every step of the way is paramount, so you'll see us inspecting our model from time to time to see how we're doing at that particular step. Everything seems to be on point and we can go to the next step of the process which is generation of the mesh from this defined area. For mesh generation, an image downscale factor of 2 is a good balance between quality and management and reconstruction in normal detail is how you should be doing it. 
We'll wait for it to calculate the mesh for us. Perfect, so now the mesh is calculated inside the region that we defined. So we'll just go over and see how the mesh is looking. Just observe it from every direction. See what parts have been reconstructed well, what parts are lacking, how the mesh is looking. See if any nooks and crannies have been missed out, any holes in the mesh, any part that didn't generate as you intended it to. In objects like these, oftentimes it's the underside of the model that is undergenerated because we mostly cannot physically go underneath it and capture the necessary data. We will see how we address that in the blended processing part later on. For now, we will get rid of the extra geometry by selecting it and filtering it out. So using the rectangular selection tool as the first pass, we'll crudely go over all of the geometry to broadly select all of the extra bits. And then we'll refine it later on by the lasso tool, which will be a bit more precise in micro adjustments in the selection. Pressing control while you select the new geometry keeps the previous selection while enabling you to select new parts. So by pressing control and dragging we select all the extra bits that we can. This part of the process is important because we do not want to be projecting the textures onto areas that we just simply won't be using later on. So it's a good practice to save ourselves from unneeded, unnecessary texture and mesh information. And it will also save you memory down the line. So we'll just keep selecting crudely as much as we can, inspecting the model as we go, which is always a good practice, and see if you're not leaving any areas behind. So just selecting as much as we can using the rectangle tool, go to the other side, select that as well. Now generally the selection process is fast and simple, but because this is a tracked vehicle, we will need to spend a tiny bit of extra time I switched from rectangle to the lasso tool quite early on, but here let's see how far we can just take the rectangle selection tool. Another tip is to double click by your left mouse button while you're selecting, and that moves the rotation pivot of the model. This will enable you to rotate around any specific areas of the mesh that you intend to. We'll go underneath and see if we can select some faces from down there. It's always great to have as little as possible to clean up in Blender. Reality Capture handles these extremely high poly meshes really well, but if you do it in Blender, it will bog you down a bit. So ideally, clean up as much as possible in Reality Capture. So now our first selection pass is complete and we'll do the filtering. So now it's crudely gotten rid of that extra geometry, but it still needs that micro cleanup before texturing. So we'll select the lasso tool, and then we'll start the micro cleaning up process. So we're setting up the rotation pivot by double clicking our left mouse button like I said earlier and now we'll trace out the object as close as we possibly can. This process does leave a bit of jaggedness and jagged edges and we will fix those when we go into Blender. So this is a bit of tricky selection because we're making our way through the teeth of these tracks. So this lasso selection tool is extremely good in situations like these. Blue triangles that you see underneath are non-manifold geometry which have risen as a result of our previous pass. They are not a part of our mesh and they do not form a closed mesh on their own as well. So we would want to get rid of them sooner or later. We can see that some of them are being selected because they are coming in our way of selection. So let's quickly select this, making sure that we select as many of these stray triangles as possible. We'll go underneath the track once more, thankfully not in person. Selecting as closely as possible once again. Remember to keep pressing control on your keyboard while you select it. We'll go as far back as we can in this view while tracing the model and then come back to complete the selection. Let's select this left away island here. There we go. We'll go to the other side to see that we're not taking any part of the mesh that we want to keep. That looks good, so now we can move on to the other side. Let's trace this brick. Now I can understand that this can be a bit boring, but believe me, the time spent here will save you hassle later on in the process. So take your sweet time, put on some music, and just get on with it. The isolation of the ground touching these side of the tracks is easier relatively because we have a defining margin between the tracks and the ground. 
so we will just easily trace that. It's helpful to follow these natural lines in order to prevent a sharp cutoff when you develop the model later on. You'll notice that while selecting, I'm constantly changing my rotation pivot point. This ensures that we are only rotating around the point of our interest. Inspecting our selection as we go, and moving on to the inner side to clean up what we can at this stage. On the other hand, what we can't clean up, we'll just use booleans in Blender to do our job. Now we go on to the back side, and selecting this ill-defined topology as much as we can. So this is pretty much what we can do at this point. So without wasting any more time, we will go on to the next step. Just give it a quick look and we can go on to filter selection. It will take a second or two to process. And now we have our mostly clean up model here. Let's see how we're doing in terms of topology. Give it some time and it shows that we have a few defects in our topology. Let's now fix that. These topology issues arise as a result of our cleanup process, but fortunately, Reality Capture has this important and very handy feature where it can detect bad topology for the most part and then try and fix it. The software tries to get rid of non-manifold geometry, fix any inconsistencies with the geometry. It's a good automatic first pass to help you down the line. Now the model that we have is 5.3 million tries, which is arguably quite large. So we'll try and simplify it to around 500,000 tries, which is a bit more manageable. If you have a low-end machine, you can use this 500k model. But I would recommend using about 5 million tries because the texture that will get projected on it will be much more crisp and better quality. Later we'll go over how to transfer that high quality texture onto a model version with just 20k tries out of the 5.3 million that we've made here. So in the next part we'll actually be working with the 5.3 million tries model. However, before we do that we'll need to unwrap the model for the texturing part of the process. The unwrapping looks fairly dense which is always great to see. And then we'll click texturing. So now the textures have been projected based on the UV unwrapping that we did. We'll again quickly scan over the model and see where are the discrepancies between the texture and the mesh. It looks fairly fine, except the parts where it didn't have the data to generate that texture data because we couldn't capture the top of the vehicle as we had real world constraints. And this is what this series is all about. Making lemonade out of lemons. After texturing, just move around your model to see what areas of the model would need to be worked on, just to get an idea of where you'll need to focus in the post. In the next part, we'll head over to Blender and make it into a usable asset. If you've got any questions or suggestions, be sure to let me know and we'll sort that out for you. Until then, farewell.